Tá Well, what a beautiful day here, guys, in Wales. A beautiful, beautiful day, but freezing cold. And apparently, we thought we were heading out of the, the cold weather now. Apparently, we've got what's called the beast from the east uh, coming, uh, which is like where we get really cold temperatures, uh, and we got that coming now. So I won't be putting my grass seed down just yet. But uh, this video, guys, it's uh, we recently, last couple of days, come back from what I would call quite an epic weekend in Essex, which is about, I don't know, 200 and, 250 mile away or something like that from here. Uh, the girls, Tanya, Charlotte, everyone was looking forward to going to Essex. Uh, lovely people, great crowd. It was a brilliant demo. Now, when we got back, James put a little, um, I think it was a yeah, one minute little sort of teaser, uh, just showing one of the horses that was a TikTok or is a TikTok star. Uh, it's a three or four year old uh, Connemara and apparently it's had hundred and well over 110 million views now because of its behavior really. It's beautiful, beautiful horse. And it'll run off with you, it'll I mean, to be honest, he's lovely that the guy who owns him, he's got, I think, five horses. Um, he's never seen a horse like, he's never come across a horse like. It's the most beautiful horse I think he's ever had. And I think you'll agree, a, a you know, a, a stunning horse, but very, very, very unpredictable. Um, and he's not ashamed to say that it's got to a stage where he's frightened of the horse now, quite rightly, to be honest. Quite rightly, that's our human nature that keeps us in one piece. Uh, so he is frightened of it. So I, I basically uh, agreed to work the horse live in front of an audience and to try and make a difference to it. Now, um, it is all. I, I wanted to keep it authentic, so I didn't want to do any prior work with it. What we did do, we we led it for like one minute into the arena with the with the seats you know with the barriers and just to make sure and that was a, a task in itself to get it into there and get it back um so yes was it was was it a risk for me to do that it is a risk guys when you do these live demos it is a risk uh maybe i shouldn't take the risk as much as i do with a horse like that because if it were you know it could be professional suicide for me but guys i i took the risk with it believed in myself that I could make a change to the horse and hopefully you'll see in this video I did. James told me it's had about 200,000 views just on one uh, outlet alone for the little the little one minute clip. No end of people asking they want to see the full video of how I managed to make a change so quickly. Uh, so here it is guys, this is, th this is the video. Hope you'll learn something from it. Now I'd just like to say you know, we travelled. We travelled up there. Me, Charlotte, and Tanya, and our, and our little lorry with Nita, and we got we got to uh, Barley Lands, a question centre in Essex. I think there's about 130 horses residing there. It's an amazing place, indoor arena, outdoor arenas, uh, amazingly kept place, um, and we were made to feel so welcome. I can't even. And I'd just like to publicly thank Mitchell. Uh, for looking after us so well. He's the guy that's actually the TikTok star with the horse. Uh, and got slid, you know, got went grass skiing as they call it. But he really looked after us guys. He keeps, he, he runs a tight ship there. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll just explain very quickly. We got up there, we were looked after. Uh, Charlotte, um, looked after Nita for me, we were given a stable. Uh, that all went really, really well. Nita settled into a stable pretty quickly, took her into arena, got, had a little bit of a uh, show to the arena where I'd be uh, demonstrating her first thing. Tanya set up a shop, Charlotte set up a little crafty pony shop. Uh, we did all that, we got the barrier sorted. So we have to get quite a lot done the day before to make sure I'm comfortable with everything. Uh, and we did all that. 
Uh, what I'll um, show you very quickly as well, Charlotte shenanigans. I think a lot of you would have seen a little bit that I put on about there. Charlotte is now doing a, a little bit of a blog for me. You'll see the odd odd few clips of it on the uh, this this site, but she does a weekly one on the subscription site. So. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of a clip of what she was filming. It's, it's really good, guys, honestly. Just a little tiny snippet. Morning, of what she it is Saturday morning. It is demo day. I'm having my cup of tea. I'm trying to be quiet because obviously I'm in the hotel. Um, but not that that, that um, added to Dad this morning. Do you know how I was woken up? Bang, 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 bang on my hotel door. Can I have your extra coffees in your room? That's before my alarm. So I rang. Is that how you woke me up? Go to reception and get some more coffee. <sighs> so yes, I am. Um, he's in his room having his coffee. I'm having my cup of tea. And then we're going. So I will update you later. Actually, I don't think he's in the room. No, he's not. I knew I could hear the car and I thought, who is... <laughs> So he's actually outside getting the lorry ready. So I'll go and knock mum and make sure that she's up and ready. Yes, he gets very, um, I don't know what the word is. I'm not anxious, but he just, he likes it all to go very smooth, very on time. He never likes to be late. Like I don't like to be late. Like I'm always early for something. But dad is the extreme. So yeah, we are on the ground floor. This is what I said. He's, we were like three doors down from reception, which is sort of why I said, go get it from reception. Go get your coffee from reception. So we were in a super duper rush, but now dad's decided he wants his McDonald's breakfast, haven't you, dad? What? I said we were in a super duper rush, but now you want your breakfast. Oh, I've got to have your breakfast, darling. Mum's half asleep. Mum's half asleep. <laughs> And I got them. Yeah. He's got, oh, he's got his notes. Oh. I bet he'll be running those off to me now. He'll be running those off. Just giving Neats a teeny feed. Dad brought the mini buckets again. I think he does it for like a space saving thing. <laughs> I was going to try and video this for you, but it's really hard to do with a phone in your hand. And it didn't quite turn out like it normally does, but I actually like it better. It's like the plat sideways. Because her mane's over the other side as well, normally. So I've got Nita ready. I've taken her for grass. I've mucked her stable out. And what have you done, Mum? Put my makeup on. Okay. Oh, I don't normally wear makeup, do I? Woo -woo. <laughs> and I've come to see Nita. He's just having a little snooze. So the demo started as usual. You know, Nita did her thing. People love to see me, uh, see where my training heads. Show you a couple of clips of that now. And then I rode a horse again that um, a 15 year old, uh, very hard in the mouth horse, needs softening, need laterals, needs to sort of accept being ridden again, just a little bit of a horse that's fed up and a little bit bullshit. That went great. <laughs> And in the afternoon, uh, after lunch, I worked with a little pony. I'll show you a couple of clips of that now. Uh, that was a that was a special little pony that I worked with, uh, 15 years old again. And, you know, I noticed a few things that were causing the problems. I just wish, you know, people could notice the problems that I noticed that cause a lot of the defensive behavior. That, I'll show you a couple of clips of that. Because it's not been easy. Oh, he rears on me 
uh, lunges at me, teeth come out at me. Like, just tries to kill me on a daily basis. <laughs> uh. Okay, stop. <laughs>
wanting his head to 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 come down and not throw it throw up in the air with that that uh, giving space and backing up there he expresses himself again uh, which he's very used to doing he doesn't know there's an end to the lead rope uh, when that lead rope tightens up he kind of thinks he can just push through that and that doesn't have a meaning and hopefully I can hold it together enough uh, because at any minute he could just pull that through my through my hands so here I'm just asking him to give me space again the more I can move his feet and he not to move mine the better so yeah you can see that little point there where he starts to 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 think that he should express himself and test the waters with me um but deep down, all he wants is leadership to be able to sort of allow himself to 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 calm and, and trust the leadership that's there. So here, guys, I'm asking for feet forward, which he gave me there. Not too bad. Feet forward. Will he stop? Will he consider me? Yes, he did. Can he now, when I suggest, go forward with his feet? Yeah. Now, the reason I... Bump the lead rope there was because he was coming into my space. Now, it's really important that I start to tell... All of those little bumps you'll see now, guys, is when he takes the slack over the, out the rope. So he goes tight, little bump. He needs to know that the end of that rope has a meaning. I, he needs to know that, and it will take a long time for him to, to get that out of his mind, that when that tightens up there, he runs with people, pulls people over, pulls people off. Um... So that's what I'm doing there. I'm trying to get the first start of it. As it comes tight, little tug, little tug. As it goes tight, little tug. Um, sometimes it can take me a long time, as I say, guys. But just trying to get the first. Now that I'm demonstrating there that when the slack comes in, you'll see that in a second now. You'll see this slack. See that slack there, guys? That's what my horses operate on. They operate on a feel from that rope. They don't want that. My horses don't want that slack coming out. Um, so that's really important for you to see that. Um, so let's see what takes place now. Um, I just bump the rope down again to get his attention. His head's lower in there. Yeah, no, he's looking. He's looking pretty okay there. So here, guys, I've grabbed my boinging stick because I knew the owner would have trouble back. You know, backing his this horse off because obviously there's history with the owner. So I put another cue in there, making sure he could tap the lead rope to get um, him to start thinking about backing off in another way. I mean, I can just bump down and they're pretty much quickly back off of me. But So I got him pretty used to backing off with the Boeing and Zip, tapping the rope. I thought he would have a little bit more of a chance to, 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 get, a, to get this horse to yield to him. Because if he doesn't yield to him, then, it, then it's just going to be exactly the same uh, in the future. It's all about getting them to respect the space and to yield that's what he needs to realise that um, that we are controlling him and he doesn't have to protect himself. So, yeah, I'm quite pleased with how things are going, really, guys, to be honest, at this point. Um, I think things are about to, to get a bit more lively in a second, which I don't mind. It sometimes can help. So, yeah, there, look, he's expressing himself again. Try to take no notice of that, other than make it a little bit uncomfortable for him for the... For, you know, so there's nothing in it for him. So now it was a little bit of forward motion there, which I didn't ask him for, so I backed him up. He's starting to respond to that. Boing is stick quite well now. So hopefully that'll be better for the owner and for Mitchell to carry one of those with him. So although there's parts of this video as I'm going on that, like there he gets upset and starts to think he can pull away, I'm actually grateful that these things start to happen because from breakdown comes breakthrough and I don't like things to go too easily because if it does, then, you know, I'm not correcting anything. It's, um, you know, something I don't really like when things go too according to plan. Replay in slow motion, guys. It's so important. He kind of is so testing every now and again, and there he he comes into my space almost to knock me down, and I I pick him on it straight away. No, don't come into this hula hoop. There he 
who's leading around me quite well there. <clears throat> there's a nice, like, bend in his rib cage. It's not so tight. He's licking and chewing. His head's come down. You know, I was feeling good again here with it. Look at his head dropping there, guys. See his head dropping. He's kind of with me. He's kind of softer looking. His ears are more sort of not moving so much a million places in one time. So, yeah, that's what, look, I just asked him to move. Right, now there, he kind of moved into my space again a little bit. So he's getting to know now, out of my space, and then you can respect me more. Um, so he, uh, yep, stopped uh, and asking there. Now, can you go forward with your feet? Give me space, yes. That was nice. He's kind of checking on me constantly with those ears. Dropped his head there, guys. That's nice. Yeah, that's looking much better. Much better. Keep his attention on me. Can he go forward? He can. There. Stopped. He's allowing me to... He's kind of sticking with me even though I'm, like, losing him a little bit and talking to the, to the spectators, to the crowd. There he's looking at me. He's got big eyes, guys. Look at his big eyes. Uh, the horse, by the way, has got the biggest eye out of all of mammals on Earth. Bigger than a whale. Bigger than any other mammal the horse has got the biggest eye isn't that amazing um so yeah can't now there guys did you see what just happened all i did was throw a rope over and he flinched and really you notice there guys all i did you know was just flop a little rope on him and he's really nervous about you know he doesn't trust people i don't know what it is uh, he doesn't put people to lead him he's he, so I would be working on so much of this desensitizing, getting really comfortable with a human, doing this sort of stuff to him without any threat to him. So I picked up on that straight away. So now I'm going to ask him to lower his head, guys. I felt he was ready for that. Um, I think I don't know if you'll see all of this. I think I think I've had to clip a bit, else it would go on. It'd be too long the video. Uh, I don't think he wanted to lower it straight away but I just stuck at it and I think he lowers it quite well in the end we'll just see how how we do that now great little nugget here guys he went to to nip me he went to nip me so I I bumped down on that rope straight away and and made him think about him maybe not doing it again um that I don't accept at all I don't want that even to go into their head that they're they're allowed to do that um to a human. Again, guys, fantastic. He thought he'd just walk through me again there. He's coming on me there. I'm onto it straight away. No, because I'd got a good backup away from me now and a bit of respect to space when I need it, then look, I just bump him back straight away. So no anger, no smashing on them, no hitting them. Just get out, get back. It's not worth you doing that. Here we go, guys. We're about to have the breakdown. Um, that I almost was looking for. I just wanted to have a breakthrough through, through a big breakdown, and we're about to have it here. Things often get worse just before they get better. Well, not all the time, but you can see here now he's a little bit like trailer loading difficult horses. They're almost in, and then it all goes downhill, and then usually it gets better. But here he started to get a little bit upset. This went on for, I think, about 10 minutes um you know where he was you know often look look there i mean this is way way into the session and he had this breakdown uh, and i just worked through it again no anger expression on my face just kept focused with with him needing to come out you know move around me nicely give me respect there you go again you know so i just Keep on looking for the breakthrough, waiting for the breakthrough. Um, and just uh, watch here. I think I think he might soften here. I'm not, I'm, no, there, look. Yeah, his front feet came up then. He's saying, no, this isn't normal. I'm, I'm 
you know, I'm checking you out big time now, he's saying. I'm checking you out. I am checking you out. Um, here, I think it may. He may soften here. No, more look, more. Um, you know, I didn't realise it went on as long as this, actually. But, yeah, still, yeah, it's still not ha perfectly happy there. But I think he's quite shocked that I'm not doing anything other than keeping focus. Is it here where he starts to change his attitude? I know it was a big, I felt a big change when he eventually did. It might be here now, actually. here where he had his um, sudden he suddenly could let let go a little bit look at that drop his head there uh, we will have one hiccup in a little bit in a minute but yeah he's kind of traveling quite nicely to my left there uh, he's giving me shoulders watch his shoulder now guys watch him release his shoulder out his right shoulder is a bit blocked there and then suddenly there yeah, release his right shoulder they're very blocked in the shoulder a lot of these horses you can get them freed up in the front it can it can um, help buck it can help so much stuff rearing a lot so there and asking to go forward he's giving me a little bit of space there he's not so tight on the rope and now he's right his left shoulder's gone again there that's nice yeah he's traveling around me quite nice quite quiet he's bent in his rib cage he's not tight at all that right shoulder's just um, gave some ground to me. <clears throat> yeah, pretty good there, guys. It's look, you know, the whole horse looks better there. The whole horse looks better. He's giving me a little bit of space back. He's looking at me. His ears. His tentative. His big eyes are on me. Um, yeah, that that that's looking much better. Much better there. Yeah, feeling good there. Look at that, guys. How wonderful was that? Was that, guys? He suddenly had that breakthrough and I felt confident enough to send him through an ever-decreasing gap there. So he had to range around me to give me space with that little tight tight gap there. Um, and he did that brilliantly, considering that was the first time he'd ever done it. Really, really pleased with that. And that was making the difference. He, he, he suddenly kind of accepted... Yeah, okay. You you you're you're earning my respect. So again, I was ready for the next step here for the lead into driving, which is what horses naturally do in the wild. They follow or, or they're driven from behind by the stallions and the mares. And he was ready for this. I, you know, I thought we'd have a few hic hic hiccups with this, but it would make a massive difference if I could get this, that get this pretty good in his mind. So there, driving. He says, oh, I'm not used to this, I'm not used to... Yeah, no, go on, boy. I can, I can, uh, can push you. Leading to driving there. I'm driving him a little bit. Driving him there. He'll soon get better at this. He's saying, I'm not used to this. Now he's leading. And that's what they do in the wild, guys. They either are pushed or they follow. Um, so there, I ask him to lead again. He says, no, no, I'm not allowed. I can't allow that. And I just say, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Don't worry. I'll be a leader to you. I'll be a parent. And there. Now, this is interesting, guys. He tried to... Right, this is slowed up now, guys, because he was about to lie down here. And I, 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 I said, no, you're not. And it really offended him. He, he said, I was about to lie down. If I want to lie down, I will lie down. But that was a great, another great opportunity for me to say, well, no, I, I control you and your feet. You don't control mine. Uh, and that, that's really good to see that there, guys. <laughs> it was a bit funny, actually. No, you know, there's always a looking at this, guys. 
in the moment. There's no way I was letting him make a decision to lie down. It's very good, the fact that he was willing to lie down with the audience, with me, and there's some ways you could, you could argue that, you know, let him lie down, let him feel comfortable. Not in this situation, I just needed to do so much more. Um, but, you know, maybe at another time, the next session, whatever, I'd probably say, okay, and then rub him while he's on the floor. But yeah, he's definitely gonna lie down there. And I says, no, and it almost as, uh, has the effect that he says, well, well, okay, you are a leader to me. You say when I can lie down and when I can't. So that's what he needs, I think, at the moment, is for me to say no to that. And I think I've benefited from it because if you look now, he's starting to even get softer now. He's getting even softer now. This is good, very good. There, he's driving nicely there. There, he's driving, I'm taking the space behind him. Now he's, he's following there. Now he's driving, now he's leading. He's taking more note of that lead rope and the float in it. Obviously the float's still coming out, but eventually it wouldn't. Now I take the space behind him. Now he's driving with a much better attitude. There, now he's leading, now he's driving. And I could, I could do this for days, guys, and it would have an effect on him. And what, he, what, he re what the lead rep represents to him. So there he's following. He's following. Now I'm taking the space and he's leading. Sorry, I got that wrong, wrong way around there. Now he's leading. Now I'm taking the space. Now he's driving. I'm driving him. And that's exactly how they would do it in their herds. And now I'm asking him to back up here. He's not got much of a rein back. Uh, he goes fr very front end heavy around people. Uh, maybe some tip bitting has done that as well. That doesn't help. Not all horses can be hand fed. It's not good for a lot of horses' minds. They become front end heavy and go into your space. And a, certainly a horse like this would not want to be hand fed. Now here, I decided to do a little bit of siding up. He's very reluctant here to come anywhere near the, the siding up block. Um, but. Once I've asked him, I can't quit there. I need to get a forward movement. Um, I don't want him thinking that that rope doesn't have a meaning to his feet. So now when I, when I pick up on that rope, there's no way that I can release that rope once I've asked like this now. If, if you notice there, it's blocked up. He would realize he's stronger than that rope. The float would have no meaning. He would then be back to his sand skiing, TikTok stuff. So. Um, I'm a, I had to keep this up until I got a forward step here. Um, so there, got a little bit of a forward step. Touched his forehead, said that's it. This rope has a relevance to your feet. Then we decided there was a lot of people around that area. I said, look, let's not overface him. So we moved the block to the other side of the arena and then it went much better then. And we went from him being totally not knowing what was required of him I worked through the problem here. No pressure when he was doing the right thing. Make the right things easy, the wrong things difficult. And he works through this now. So he becomes session one of a siding up horse. And now, you know, if I did this, pressure there, look guys, until it, like, no pressure because he moved in towards the block, toward, towards the fence. Because that's all mountain is and siding up is hindquarters to the horse's left. Um, uh, hind quarters to the horse's left and then that's all it is and then lining up to the right place and I like to touch them to a stop guys that's a really good cue for a lot of things in life one rain stops to just generally lots of stuff when they're, you want their feet to stop a little touch to stop and I teach that on the ground a lot of people see me do that so I'll touch him there oh look he stopped oh he's just lost it a little bit there because his hind quarters went to his right Remember I said to the left there, to a left now. Now will he, the pressure will be released now when he moves there, hindquarters to his left. Perfect, pressure's off. Hindquarters to the right, pressure on guys, pressure on, pressure, pressure, pressure. No pressure as he's going. As he goes now to his left, you'll see me release the pressure there. There, no pressure. Now forward, forward, touch, right, he stopped. Just almost, guys, but those hindquarters drifted to his right. So I'll go back to it. Um, and now the more this doesn't go to plan straight away, the better, like there, look, guys, 
I welcome welcome all that because I just keep working it till he makes the decision of where to stop and where to feel comfortable because that's all they want is to be comfortable, to feel safe um, and not waste any energy. And that's it. That's all they want. Um, you know, and there's, a, there's a saying, all a horse is is a coward on four legs. And that's basically it, guys. We've got to recognise that they're totally different to us. They're just trying to feel safe and trying to get through the day without being eaten because they are prey animals. So there, guys, I've asked him. Right, he's quite lined. Do you see that, guys? I've touched him. He stopped for a second. I let him know, but I said, no, that's not quite over enough for getting on. So there, touched him a little bit. Will he go forward a little bit here? He's a stunning horse when you look at him, isn't he? Um, but they're hard to keep clean, aren't they? <laughs> I've got that trouble with Chevy, I think. Um, I'm glad it doesn't mean as much to me as someone like Charlotte or the average the average um, girl or, or lady. Um, so here, go for it again. Um, so it hasn't been completely plain sailing, but I like the fact he's not too worried. Touch, and he stopped. You see that, guys? Now I'll let him know. Just real be soft and, and gentle with him. Be as soft and gentle as we can, but be as firm as necessary to get a change in the feet. So there, ask him to go on a little bit, touch him because he, he kind of done the right thing. And I think this might be the last time. So his hindquarters to his left, beautiful. Come forward, find the spot, touch to stop. Look at that, guys. Absolutely lovely. Now, I left him there for a while now, so there was summer in it for him. He's really relaxed so there. Guys, this is really interesting. A couple of people clapped uh, and um, he went absolutely ballistic, right? So... You'll see now, he gave me an opportunity. The, in all fairness, the owner spoke up and said, you know, there's no way he's going to accept that. Here we go. And I thought, yeah, well, we'll try and work through this. Um, so you'll see now exactly how I tried to work this problem of the uh, audience clapping. Now, I've just wrapped the rope around my hand once. You should never, ever do that unless you've worked with thousands of horses, guys. Don't do it. I know exactly how to release myself from that in a split second. I have done it loads of times. So don't do that, guys, just because I'm doing it.
And now for the hardest bit for me, okay? And that's handing the lead rope over to, to owners. It's when, because you've got to remember this history between the horse and the owner's history between the horse and uh, Mitchell. And they know who's handling them. There's history there. Things haven't gone brilliant. Uh, so handing the lead rep over immediately, the horse thinks, well, that's not, that's not Steve. Uh, so, our, you know, it is difficult for, for us to do that. Now, in all fairness, I ask the owner not to look at the horse and to lead out in front here, right? Okay. Now, he is so used to checking in on, on that horse. In other words, he leads him, checks on him, checks on him, checks on him, because he's bowled him over that many times you know, it's not good. So it's self-preservation, it's protection, uh, but he, he's so used to looking back at the horse. You'll see now uh, that he keeps, even though I'm asking him not to look at the horse, he, he, it's, it's in him to do it, to, for, for, to keep himself safe. So you'll see that, but eventually, uh, that bit wasn't filmed, I don't think, because I don't know it was a batch change or whatever. But he did get there, guys. He ended up not looking at him. It was difficult for him, and it'll be difficult for Mitchell not to do it. But that's what they need to do. They can't keep leading the horse, checking in on him, because the, the, the horses, most horses on the planet, they know exactly, they look at you and they can feel what you're feeling, and you're thinking, any minute you're going to jump on me, or... Uh, you know, it just sends those crazy and then you've got to have, they ha you have to be so super confident and I know I'll make it sound easier than it is, but you cannot, they'll see it in your eyes, like when you look at them and oh, are you going to do it now? Or are you going to do it? And they know. So he does get there in the end, guys, but you'll see this where it finds it so difficult not to look at him. Okay. <laughs> So wow, guys, that's how it ended that demo uh, for the, for that horse, the TikTok star. How did it go? I think it went. You know, I felt like I made huge changes to that horse. I really did. I felt really great to the stage where I didn't. There's a part of me doesn't think it's going to work with the owner. Okay, he kind of agrees with me. He's got his other horses. He doesn't. He he isn't able to spend enough time. He is worried about the horse, and I really considered should I take the horse, okay? And it would involve Charlotte, obviously, it would involve Charlotte helping me. So I asked Charlotte in front of everybody, people who were there will remember, and there was a method in my madness. I could have said to Mitchell, I could have led the horse out myself. I had no idea after that work, how uh, he would lead back to his stables, which was about 250 yards, okay, guys? So I, I think if I would have, took the horse out would have probably been okay i'd have stopped a couple of times and kind of transferred it quite well to the outside although that would take me days to do it properly days and days if it was my horse i would be out there transferring that control to outside and doing lots of groundwork outside going all around that big massive farm uh, that's where it has to uh, be that horse has to be controllable and feel like you are capable of leading it so i said to charlotte Charlotte, can you lead, lead him back to his stable? Charlotte said, no, Dad, come on. No. And I said, come on, Charlotte. And I was trying to give her the look. Sometimes I'll give her a look and I just say, come on, Charlotte, there's a reason why. So I wanted to see whether it would transferred enough uh, for Charlotte to lead him back. And if that was the case, 
then I would have really considered maybe uh, helping the horse out and taking him back. Uh, but Charlotte, she, fair play to Charlotte, she did do it. She did do it. She did lead him back. And when I saw her a little bit later in the day, she said, don't, please don't ask me to do that. I, she said, he really scared me. He almost jumped on her several times. And it was one of the worst experiences she's had for a long time. So thankfully, she was okay. But it it hadn't transferred enough. Uh, like I said, I think I may have been able to do, to, to gain back okay without too much hassle. But that's me and... Uh, it's not great news. Charlotte, there's no way I, you know, Charlotte didn't want to be involved. So I've told the owner that, you know, it's not, you know, we can't take him. So there, is, there will be someone out there who's interested in this horse. If you are, you know, he is for sale at a very, very reasonable price, guys. Uh, you know, does want work, but I think I've showed it's possible in the right hands to really make a great horse. A lot of the Difficult horses like this, the temperamental ones, uh, end up some of the best horses. So that's that. That That's the situation. It didn't transfer to outside. Uh, it did frighten Charlotte. So that's that. So that's that video, guys. You saw how, how, I, how I worked. I would work exactly the same as that outside for days, even weeks so that he felt confident outside. And then you're really on your way then, aren't you? Then then, then, then the, the rope means something, we mean something, and he doesn't feel the need to to, to send everyone grass skiing and, <laughs> and whatever. So that's the end of that, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. Sorry about the noise with the microphone, uh, with my little uh, uh, microphone dropping off. So I did the best I could with voiceovers. Again, guys, uh, share, comment, we do read those, they do help us, uh, share, comment, like, love, whatever you want to do with, with that, uh, so happy trails guys again, till the next time, and uh, yeah, see you soon, we crack on. <laughs>